All right, so we have another homework assignment. Uh, I believe this one is Fibonacci sequence. And it says right here, generate the nth Fibonacci number. And what are Fibonacci numbers? They're this thing, this is the Wikipedia article. Um, let's read it. In mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers commonly denoted f of n form a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, such that each number is the sum of the two preceding ones, starting from zero and one. That's it. And then it gives you some of the information about the uh, formula that creates the sequence. f of zero equals zero, f of one equals one, and f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two, the two preceding it. And then here is the sequence as it is outlined. Zero and one, those are the starting ones. Zero plus one is one, one plus one is two. 2 plus 1 is 3, two, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so on and so on. So the homework assignment is to generate this. All right, so I started a new project, call it Fib3. Made a couple attempts at this. Uh, ignore that. Ignore that. So what do we want to do? Let's try to mock or mimic what they have given us. We have f, let's call it fib. Um, these numbers start from zero. Let's call it n and uh, make it a unsigned integer, unsigned 32-bit, because it can't be negative. And the output, as we can see here, also cannot be negative. Zero is the lowest number, then it goes positive all the way through. So make the output a unsigned integer. So what they tell us here at the very beginning, if f of zero is equal to zero, so let's, if n is, let's do less than or equal to zero, right? It shouldn't be less than zero just because we can't, it doesn't allow it to be, but still, just in case, return zero. Um, I think we have an else if, right? Yeah, there we go. Else if, write another conditional. Get rid of this E. Else if n is equal to one, what do we want to do? Let's return a one. And last but not least, we have to do the Fibonacci part, which they have fib n minus one plus fib n minus two. At least that's what they have here in the equation, right here. That's how they defined it. And let's see if this works. It looks like it compiled so far. Um, to test it, it's best to do this in a for loop for a number in range from 1 to, let's say, 11. That's the, uh, oh, I need another dot here. Annotation for range, I believe. And look, everything fixed here. And we can do a print macro. And we're going to say fib. Let me know. Let us know what we put in here, and say that's equal to yada yada yada. So num, and then fib of num. I left the hello world in there just to make sure everything is good and dandy. Let's move this over so you can see it more. And let's see what we have. Cargo run. Things compiled, things have printed out. <clears throat> um, it should be noted that we started from one instead of zero, but we have the hello world. F of one is one. F of two is one. F of three is two. Um, and then so on and so forth. We get to five is five. Eight, 13. 21, 34, 55. It looks like we have it so far. Let's start this at zero and let's go to, I don't know, 14. 
And let's get rid of this line. And let's try this again. So printed out, we have zero, one, two, all the numbers that we had before. We have their 21, we have their 34, we have their 55, we have their 89, we have their 144, and we also have an extra one. So in summary, that's how we go about writing out the Fibonacci sequence. You can just follow the formula. However, on a side note, if you guys want me to go over recursion, um, which is what we're using here, is when a function calls itself, I can do that more in depth. Just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll get to it. With that being said, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Peace.